record. Um, so today we go straight to market sizing questions. And market sizing questions are often used uh, in interviews because they require a mix of logic, maths, and common sense, you know? So it's just a way for employers to, to look at you in action while you try to think through a problem, what your thought patterns are. This is where they sort of look, see you critically thinking through questions right there and then, you know? So the attitude we bring forward into trying to solve a question like this is what matters more than the answer itself because there's not really always um, a right answer, just estimate is what this is about. It says they can be asked as standalone questions or as part of a larger case interview. Candidates that are competent with market sizing questions can find them extremely easy to execute. And if included in an unstructured interview, it can result in the candidate having an extra 20% time to, to answer other questions, you know. All the top tier consulting firms are likely to test their candidates with a market sizing question at some stage in the process as it is considered a back of the envelope um, calculation. You know, uh, like I said before, I've not come across this in any of my interviews, but that is not to say that it's, it's not possible to come across them. So um, hence the reason for including this in our uh, presentation. Here's an example, and we are going to all discuss this. We are going to all talk. We we'll need to unmute and talk around what we think around a question like this. I mean, if you have been asked how many fridges are there in India, how would you attempt to answer such a question? Such a question. The floor is open. Let's remember that it's not about the answer that we give. It's about it's more about the logic of it. So you've got to talk about your thought pattern when you are discussing this or answering this. Uh, you can't just think through everything in your head and just bring um, a number forward. It's got to be that you you gradually let them see how you are approaching it. So say I'm your interviewer and you want to answer this question, how would you think through? Let's hear from you, please. Well, how many fridges are in, there in India? Wow. Uh, well, I think we, we have to collect that data really and um, we have to know all the cities in India to start with. Good. Then we have to know the houses in each. Is it just houses or house? Anywhere fridge might be used, you know? Yeah, yeah, anywhere. Which might include uh, houses, uh, organizations, and um, yeah, I think we have to break it down and collect that data before we can get uh, the number of fridges in India because India is so big with a population of like 1.4 billion. I like the fact that you mentioned the word population of about 1.4 billion. So, so you are starting off looking at, okay, let's look at the, the whole population, about 1.4 billion. Then we bring it to households. Say like how many, uh, people would be in a household so that we start, you know, we start working it out, working that estimate out 
you know, in, in our heads or as we talk, okay? So let's say, okay, there, there's about six, between six to 10 people, so to say within, um, within a household and they've got generally maybe one fridge, let's say generally one fridge, okay? So this is how we start to approach a question like that, isn't it? You know, so the fact that you are reasoning along a, a certain pattern, that's what they want to see, okay? We're talking population, we're talking how many people would be within a household, and uh, then that starts to narrow, narrow it down. Then we start to talk about uh, businesses, like you said, that would have buildings where fridges would be, uh, restaurants and stuff like that, you know? And then we can we can say, okay, are we maybe maybe uh, we're looking at since we say 1.4 billion, and if we divide 1.4 billion by 10, you know, what does that give me? Um, what's 1.4 1 billion divided by 10? That'll give us 140 million. 140 million. million. Okay. Yeah. So so I've, I, I, arguably maybe. Okay, but 140 million as uh, in terms of households. How about businesses? You know, you know. So, so I can say give give or take. Uh, we are looking at uh, maybe about 150 to 200 million fridges as an estimate. You know, just just that thought pattern is is what they want to see. Uh, and the same applies to how many beds were sold in UK in 2019. Okay, so how would you approach question two? How many beds were sold in the UK in 2019? So this is not a case of how many beds are in UK were sold. How would we think through this? Remembering or having it at the back of our minds that not every household would buy a new bed in that year. So, but how how would we approach a question like this? I think uh, I think it's the same approach as well. Um, we just need to know uh, all the places that beds are being uh, sold, mm. and um, yeah, start to collect their data between January to December mm. to see the sales of each place selling beds and just compute the total at the end of the day for 2019. Okay. Okay. So we are looking at, okay, what's the population of UK in 2019? Okay, let's say some, some people bought new beds, most didn't. Maybe I'd say about what, um, a quarter? or a third probably of that population probably bought a new bed. Then we will look at uh, uh, businesses that use beds as well, nursing homes, hospitals, you know, uh, care homes, and uh, of course, and hotels as well, and, and places like that. We look, we, we include all of this in our discussion as we try to bring a number, which is just an estimate into. So generally, I just wanted us to have a feel of these sort of questions and what is expected of, of us. It is not about, I must have a right figure in mind. It is about how I'm approaching answering a question like this. Do we understand that? Yes. Thank you. I believe this is central to, uh, um, you know, problem solving. It is. It is. You know, so if one is presented with an unstructured question, how do you go about, um, you know, doing some form of analysis and deriving at some logic? Yeah. To, to give 
um, you know, to pro to provide something that is reasonable, something right. that makes sense. That's right. Yeah. Yes. I, I was actually very interested in this question too, um, and I was going to say, what if one extended it to, what if one added to this question that by how much do we think this grew in twenty twenty? How much do we think that this um, figure, assuming we arrived at a figure? Okay, okay. If if we were to add to this question and say, by how much would we say it that number grew in twenty twenty? All right, yeah. I yeah. thought that might be an interesting addition to the. Question. It might be. It might be considering the fact that in twenty twenty we had more people stay at home. Right. We had all of us stay at home actually. Yes. Okay. What impact could that have had on the bed selling industry, so to say, uh, companies? You know, so and, I like I like that. And businesses also shut down. Yes, to a large extent. So, so would would it have increased or decreased or and you know not forgetting that people did not really earn much in that year, mm. and would they really have been able to afford buying more in twenty twenty? Um, yeah, just you know, just all of that thought pattern is it, just what is uh, cogent to to this type of question. Thank you very much for that, sir. And now we come to different types of analysis, which we will do. I said we are going to use our not wind to to we'll take not wind not wind further and try to perform all these types of analysis. I think there is more actually. There is. We've got key metrics, which are which are the key performance indicators that we've, we've always heard about. Uh, and these are normally those measures that tell us how a, a business is doing in terms of the revenue, their, their sales, their profits, their profit margin, you know, their costs, uh, just general health of a business is what key, match, uh, key metrics or key performance indicators deal with. Then we have contribution analysis. Okay, we want to see, for example, what contribution did um, a subcategory of a pro of you know certain products add to the profit we made in a certain year. You know, variance analysis will deal with uh, the variation. How say I want to look at I work with payroll, so we want to look at uh, okay how did um total amounts that we 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 paid out this month how did it differ from the previous month month on month variation you know and and you know what caused it and stuff like that that is variance analysis that that's just an example but it's not limited you know to that uh correlation analysis we want to see uh for example the correlation or the relationship between uh, our sales and our profits, you know, um, is, did, did our profit increase in line with our sales, or was it uh, was it the opposite? We want to look at that and see if there was any correlation at all. Pareto analysis, uh, which is from uh, a Pareto rule, that's that's something around uh, put twenty percent um of your effort uh goes into what makes 80 percent of your of your profit so i look at my products 80 percent of it is just requiring 20 percent of my effort so i then use that to focus more on those products because that's those are the ones that are with little effort giving me more profit you know i don't just spread my energy across evenly that would not be that would not be smart, you know. So that's what Pareto analysis is about. Comparison analysis. We want to compare. Okay, what happened between a country or a region uh, as regards a certain uh, service that we 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 provide uh, in comparison to another another region? That is an example. Trend analysis. Trend. We want to see how did we do over time in terms of uh, um, 
uh, the number of orders that we, we've uh, received um, in the last uh, how many quarters or how many months, you know, uh, that is what trend analysis, you know, is about. And, and, and it's not limited to these types of analysis. So it's just some of them um, that we have here. And then we go on to, to look at, okay, the, okay, uh, what I just explained actually, comparing sales and profit by year, sales by manufacturer, profit by product category, uh, sales by product category and channel, um, profit by product subcategory reviewed by country. These are, I believe these are questions we can answer with our North Wind, um, with our North Wind data that we are currently on. Trend analysis, you know, helps us to understand what's happened over time. We, we see the rise and fall of uh, our performances, you know, in terms of whatever measure we want to we want to look at it by. We look at seasonality, you know, uh, displaying different different uh, measures by month, by year, by quarter, by decades, whatever it is that we want to look at. Uh, ranking analysis is another one where we want to see the top 15 countries that brought us more sales or the top five products that, uh, that you know, gave us more sales or we want to display products that contribute to top 20% of the, of the profit, you know, so that's, and so on and so forth. That's what ranking analysis is about. And now we come into, we are almost, you know, touching the end of this uh, slides, uh, which is good, which means we can go back to actual doing the work itself. Um, reviewing the technology of Excel, and it's not just Excel, it's, this should have been, you know, reviewing the technology of Microsoft more like, because, um, Power BI is born from, you know, from Excel, actually. It's just um, um, an improvement in terms of uh, the DAX, in terms of the visualizations, which are really more advanced than what we have in Excel, you know. But in Excel, we've got Power Map, we've got Pivot Tables, which we have started to use. We've got Power View. Power View is in, is more, uh, it, of a Power BI, uh, where we we the Canva where we put where we we have our charts. We've got the spreadsheets in Excel, the tables, Power Pivot. We've got this in Excel as well, which is the data model in Power BI. They, those two are the same thing, you know. Um, for data manipulation, we've got Power Query. Mm -hmm. We've got Power Query which we've seen a couple of times as well. And the Power Query is the extract transform load feature. We use it to get the data. We transform uh, the data inside Power Query where we clean and do all sorts. And then we load it into either Power BI if we were doing that in Power BI or into Excel um, if we were doing it in Excel. Okay, so what is Power Query again? Just a few more, just a few most more functions, you know, that Power Query does for us. We have we've already established that we do extract transform load ETL. Then we perform common transformations such as changing the data type, renaming columns, cleaning up data, uh, grouping data if we need to group, uh, creating custom columns. Um, um, a lot of more things than what, more functions actually than what we have it for. The more we use it, the more, and the more problems we come across, um, the more of the functions that we will we'll get to start to use. This is still, it says Excel in action. So from data sources, it goes into Power Query and it's loaded either into the Excel table or into the Power Pivot where relationships are generated. And then this part would be that we then load it for analysis 
purpose. Uh, what is power pivot? Okay, the power pivot, um, I believe, um, go back. It's a powerful database, manages millions of rows of data. It creates, this is the primary function of it. It creates relationship between tables of data. Okay, as we can see, I hope, I wish we could, let me see if I can zoom this uh, out more. Okay, so we can we can see there is a link between these two tables, the other details and the orders, okay? And it is, the link is formed using that order ID, which is common to both of them, okay? Um, and this customer name, this customer's table rather, we, we have a customer ID here, okay? And on the customer table as well, we must have a, a customer uh, ID. Um, this table is not showing it well for us, but, but yes, these two tables here shows us what power pivot. It looks like this in Excel, and it looks like this in Power BI as well. I can't wait to see when we when we use it in Excel. Um, it is this relationship that our DAX formula language relies on. So relationship, being able to model your data is very important to, to the outcome that you would get and how easy it would be uh, and how simple, simple life would be trying to walk through, uh, walk through your, your, your formulas that you would use. Powerful key metric and KPI calculations. Okay, that is, is powerful for that. But it's not just that, even just a pivot table can, can be easily used to calculate our KPIs, you know. We move on. Okay, what happened? Let me escape that and bring it back. Okay. All right, moving on. Then we have the power view. And the power view is the Canva where we create interactive dashboards, uh, advanced visualizations. Um, this is majorly Power BI. The power view would be Power BI. Uh, new methods of viewing and understanding your data, powerful filtering and highlighting capabilities. Um, so is the Canva, is the, that, that where we drag and drop uh, charts, that is the power view, okay? And then we've got a power map. If we are doing geographical analysis, we've got the power map, the, the map there to, to you know, give us a real time, which part of the world we are talking about, you know, if we set it up properly. Um, it's 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 just really kind to the eyes. It's 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 lovely to use. Uh, it says automatically geocodes, uh, different from forms of visualization. Zoom into graphs and different views. You know, uh, of all everything on there, the first two are the are the real real uh, information that you know really captured the essence of this of this uh, power, power map um, and still more on power query, you know, um, it loads data. We have said that different types of data from database, from text files, from web sources, we can load from many sources. Uh, it perform online searches to find the data. Um, it merges data from different tables into one table. You know, if we can get data from different sources, uh, from different tables rather, we've, we've seen the merge function of in Power Query. We append, so merging and appending are two different ways of combining two tables or more tables into one to consolidate your work. We clean and transform data quickly and easily. We change data types, we create custom columns and we perform grouping of data. I like the fact that we are repeating this, 
these things because it just takes more repetition is part of is part of learning okay um and it looks like that is it really because i can't it looks like that's the end of my slide yay it's the end of my slide okay all right so any question at all as far rounding up this today have we got any questions 